Welcome to the Be Your Own Personal Trainer video series where I'll talk you through the basics of putting together your very own workout. It's really not as difficult as the fitness industry make out, I promise you. So let's start off with the types of workout available and you'll find them in the first three tabs at the bottom of this spreadsheet. Now there are a million and one different types of workouts from supersets to German volume training and if you're a hardcore bodybuilder or a professional athlete this choice might be key to your success. But you're not either of these things. You see, the majority of gym goers don't need anything more fancy than just these three workouts. Full body, split and circuit. Anything else is just overkill or to give you variation. Or to sell you never-ending editions of workout magazines and personal training sessions. You don't need to make this hard. Look at it like giving the average commuter a Formula One driving course. Yes, it will be interesting but it's unlikely to make them a better driver and they'd probably end up hurting themselves eventually. So let's go through each workout type so you can decide which fits you. Who knows, maybe all of them will, or maybe you'll work out that working out just isn't for you. The first is full body, and this is the type of workout that trains all of your muscle groups in one session. Yes, the fitness industry often isn't the most creative at naming their shit. And whilst this is an awesome way of working out, I actually wouldn't advise it for people who want to train on consecutive days. You see, when we train with resistance, which is a gym jargon way of saying strength train, our muscle fibres get damaged. Don't worry, they're supposed to. We don't get stronger when we're actually doing the exercise. Instead, when our muscle fibres repair, they rebuild themselves stronger, but they don't get the chance to repair if we don't give them at least a day or two's rest in between workouts. So if you're looking to work out one, two, maybe even three days a week, a full body workout might be perfect. If you want to train more, then you might want to consider a split workout. So this is where we split up the muscle groups. You know, when you hear gym bros talking about leg day or chest day, this is what they're talking about. And it works amazingly if you want to train most days, because while we're working on one bit of our body, the other bits are resting without us actually having to stop training. You can split up the body in a ton of different ways, but often that means that actually you only end up training each muscle once a week. So instead, we've gone for an upper body and a lower body, nice simple split, so that if you work out four days a week or more, that's each muscle group being used at least twice. If you're working out any fewer days than four, I'd say go full body. But like with all of this advice, it's just advice. The decision making in the end is completely up to you. The last type of workout is a circuit, and this is often the type of workout that the home exercise programs show you. They're hard, but short, sure, and that actually suits some people's brains and lifestyles. Now, the difference between a circuit and the other two is the amount of rest time. So, in both the full body and split workouts, you're supposed to have a couple of minutes rest in between each exercise, just to make sure that you're always working at the very top of your strength potential. But in a circuit, there is no rest. You go through each exercise, one straight after the other, until you get right to the end. And because you can do as many circuits as you want, you get to decide how long each workout is. But don't forget, you don't just have to stick to one type of workout. There's nothing stopping you from doing a full body on a Monday and Wednesday, and then going crazy and doing a circuit on a Friday. Your body, your rules. The next stage is to pick what equipment you want to train with, and it's important to realise that there is no one best bit of kit. Your muscles have no idea whether you're picking up a 200 quid barbell or a 20 kilogram bulldog. So the final four tabs show you four different types of equipment, and I've picked these four as they're normally the most popular for at-home workouts. You might even own some of them already. In fact, the first type of weight I know you own because it's your body weight. You can have an exceptional workout with just your own body. Trust me, have you ever tried to do a pull-up? Plus, the good news is, is that it's truly portable and you always have it with you. The next tab shows dumbbell exercises, but you could just as easily use a bar or kettlebell for most of them. You could even use a bottle of water or a bag of flour. This tab basically just means something heavy that you can pick up. There is a problem though that I see with barbells or kettlebells or dumbbells. And that's that they tend to be expensive and they take up a lot of space. 
Now, you can buy cheap plastic ones, but they rarely go higher than about five kilograms, which is too light for most exercises. However, some people do love working out with them, so if that's you, crack on. Okay, this next one shows resistance bands, and I am a huge fan of these. They're light, they don't take up much space at all, and you can get them in a bunch of different resistance levels. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you have the small ones or the super long ones. All the exercises here can be done with either, so you may just have to be a little innovative or creative, but that's a good thing, right? And the last type of kit is a suspension trainer. These are often called by the brand name TRX, but you don't need to spend that much money and get the branded ones. The cheap ones are the same and you can pick one up for about 30 quid. Now, I love a TRX. It uses your body weight as the resistance, but it allows us to play with angles and therefore gravity a lot more than if you just used your own body. You may have noticed that each of these equipment tabs have the exercises split up into columns, and in the next video we'll go through those. On your spreadsheet, you will see that the exercises in each equipment tab are split into movement patterns. And a movement pattern is a basic movement your body frequently performs. So there are five of these basic movement patterns, plus I've also included a core and a power exercise column too. The first movement pattern we have is us pushing things. And pushing things works our chest and triceps on the back of your arms. The second is pulling towards you. And that works your back and your biceps. You can also push things over the top of your head, and that uses your shoulder muscles, but obviously also your arms. And the next couple of movement patterns are how you bend down to pick stuff up. So you can either do that in a knee dominant way, which works your quads on the front of your thighs, or you can go hip first, and that uses your hamstrings and glutes on the back of your legs. The next are the core exercises. Now, I'm not a fan of ab crunches, so you won't find any of those here. You see, your core includes a fuck ton more than just your six pack muscles, and that's basically all that crunches work. Your core is also your obliques on your sides, some deep, deep ab muscles, your diaphragm, your pelvic floor, and your lower back, plus a little bit of ass muscle. And these things all work together to protect your spine, allow for safe twisting and bending, plus a bunch of other useful things. And crunches just ain't gonna cut it to improve all of these things. Our final column shows power exercises. Most of these exercises work most of the muscles in your body, plus they're pretty explosive movements like jumping and sprinting, so they get you a little out of breath too. And if you hover over any of the exercises, you'll find a link to a YouTube technique video. Now, I've tried to pick videos which are the least fat phobic, but even so, I really excuse the singular body type and the extraordinary amount of naked flesh on display in them. I've also gone with short videos. Most exercises do not need the 20 minute explanation that some trainers think we need. However, if you do need a little more instruction, there are tons of other videos online, or we can do some online coaching to go through any that you're really struggling to get. And please remember though, that despite the shouts from the fitness industry that there is one perfect technique, there really isn't. You're not a Formula One driver, remember? It doesn't matter if you don't get maximal muscle fiber recruitment. It does matter though that you do the move safely and to your unique body type. And that doesn't always mean hitting the made up industry standard for that movement. Often your version will actually be better. Your body knows how to move your body around correctly for your body. Listen to it and trust it. And I'm more than happy to check your technique at any time if you need me to as well. So now we get to the exciting bit, actually putting together your first workout. Now you'll see for each workout type there's an example, plus there's a few blank templates for you to create your own. But for now let's just go through each section and explain what goes in them. Okay, firstly I've written for you an order to do your exercises in, and I'd highly recommend that you stick to it. Um, this is the order that makes the most physiological sense, but of course the choice is always yours. So first we start off with a power exercise. This is really useful at the beginning of a workout as it helps to warm up your body before you start lifting some weights. Then we alternate the rest of the basic movement patterns so that your muscles always get a little breather before you work them again. And then finally we finish off with a core exercise. 
These are almost always at the end of workouts. You don't want to exhaust the thing which is protecting your back until you're definitely done needing it. Once you've accepted my order or you've gone with an order that you feel happy with, you can start to fill up your template with your choice of exercise. All you need to do is find the movement pattern you want to work, pick a bit of equipment you want to use, and finally pick an exercise from the correct column. So for example with this one, I've chosen a snatch with a dumbbell. Oh, and you are allowed to giggle at the name snatch by the way. Remember, there is no universal best equipment or best exercise. There is only the exercise that you enjoy the most and that your body feels the most comfortable doing, twinned with the equipment that you have. Don't pick exercises that you hate. A workout should be fun, not a lesson in teeth grinding and willpower. You see, I never ever have lunges in my workout, ever. And absolutely fucking lutely no burpees. My only rule is, is that you can't miss out entire movement patterns, so you can't, like, never work your legs. We're not aiming for bro science six-packs here, remember? We're aiming for long-term health and happiness, and that means working all of our muscles the same number of times. So the final piece of writing your own workouts is the stuff which is normally completely overcomplicated by the fitness industry. So we're just going to make this super simple because there is literally no need to make a commuter's life more difficult than it needs to be. There are far more interesting and important things to worry about than whether six or eight reps is the most beneficial. Firstly, let me explain some gym jargon that I've used here. So a repetition or rep is the number of times you can perform an exercise. And a set is the number of reps you do until you stop to rest. No, you can't just do one set followed straight away by another. So in this example, you couldn't just do 30 reps in a row with no break, but that will make more sense when I go over how to pick the right weight. Let's look at picking sets first. The number you do is completely dependent on how much time you have free. Obviously more is better up to a point. I mean, don't be doing like 20 sets. Up to five is more than enough. Because also remember you have a life. Don't let training interfere with the enjoyment of your day. Because if you're turning down invitations to see mates every day just to finish your sets, then I don't know. But, you know, you do you. The number of reps, however, is a little more specific. But again, like I said, we're going to keep it as simple as it actually needs to be. I only ever want you to choose between two workout goals. Workout goal one is get stronger. And number two is go for longer. You get to choose, and you get to swap it around whenever you want. So if you want to get stronger, you need to do fewer than 15 reps, as it shows in this example. But if you want to improve your endurance, i.e. go for longer, then you're going to do more than 15 reps, up to probably about 30, but please don't get too anal with the numbers for that. And then once you've decided on how many sets and reps you want to do, the last thing to work out is what weight you're going to lift. And the weights that you pick are going to be completely dependent on the number of reps you chose to do. Remember, fewer or greater than 15. If you're doing fewer than 15 reps, you'll need to pick a weight that means that by the time you get to 15, you are struggling. In fact, if you don't quite make it to 15 because it's too hard, then all the better as it shows that your weight was heavy enough. If you can only manage 8, 10, 12 reps maybe, then that's fine. This also counts if you're using any equipment other than weights. If you can do more than 15 reps, make it harder. So it may mean changing from a wall push-up to a full one on the floor. Or maybe it's moving your feet while using a suspension trainer to make it harder. Or it could be starting with the resistance band a little more stretched to add more tension right from the beginning. This works the opposite way if you're looking to work on your endurance. If you can't do more than 15 reps of the exercise, make it easier or use a lighter weight. Having said that, you don't want to be able to do like infinity reps. So if you find yourself easily nailing 30 reps, then it's not quite hard enough. Weight choice is so important and most people just don't go hard enough or they just stop too soon. You'll know when you can't do any more reps and that the weight is right because your technique will go to complete shit or you physically won't be able to finish that full final rep. If you're unsure if you can do another rep, just try and see what happens. Just listen to your body, but don't carry on if you feel physical pain.
And don't forget that the better you get at the exercise, the more weight you're going to be able to lift. So the weight that you pick at the beginning might not be the same forever. It is a changeable thing, so make sure you change it as you improve. So the same writing process is true for the full body and split body workout types. And there is only one slight addition if you're using the circuit style workout. And that is that you can still choose the exercise duration by the number of reps if you want, or instead you could use time. In this example, I've set the exercise to be 45 seconds long before I stop and move on to the next exercise. Now, you can use any time you want here, 30 seconds, two minutes, it's totally up to you. Just play around with a few times and see what you enjoy the most. You also get to decide how many circuits you do before the workout is ended. And again, this is completely dependent on how much time you want to spend working out. Same rules as before, the more the better, but there is a limit from when it goes to useful and fun to a complete soul-crushing chore. Experiment as to where that line is for you. And that's it. That's an entire workout written from start to finish, and it really is that simple. Change the exercises whenever you want to, and change the workout types too. You're not tied to doing one thing forever, and you only have to do it until it doesn't suit you anymore.